Hi there, it's Kayla here from Cards by Kayla. Today I'm going to share with you how I make my loaded envelopes for loaded envelope shares. And this is how I make the actual envelope. This particular envelope is what I use as a test envelope, which means I make an envelope up and I just do it out of plain cards. And then as I make stuff, I pop it in there to see how it all fits together and if I've made enough or not enough and if everything will work in that particular envelope. So today I'm going to be making a test envelope. This is how I make them. There are some fantastic um, tutorials out there as well. One of which I follow and I'm totally in love with her work and that's Anna from Loaded Envelopes Galore who on YouTube is Lace Boutique One and the other person I follow is Tamika from Scrap the World and she does some amazing tutorials. She also does a lot of swaps in America and internationally which is amazing. For people here in the UK swaps are a little bit harder to find so we are working on sorting out something for those in the UK so watch this space all my sizes are here and I will also put them in the description box below I work in inches so the sizes I'm going to be giving you right during this video are going to be in inches but I will convert them into centimeters for those that work in centimeters and all that will be in the description below other than that, let's get started. So, to begin with, you're going to need your paper trimmer. This is the one I use. I find this quite handy as it has the extended arm. It means I can throw it in a bag and take it wherever I'm going with and I want to craft. So that's quite handy and it's nice and easy to saw. It did come with a scoring bit but I don't like that on there I prefer to use a scoring board so I took that off the first piece for our loaded envelope is the back piece now it's the bit that forms the rear of the envelope now that piece is six inches by nine inches so let's just trim this down this is the nine and the six all your scraps I will link you up I use a lot of my scraps for making bows and other items which are very easy to make um, I'll pop the link below for you so keep hold of your scraps the long front piece which is going to form the body of the envelope is nine inches by ten and a half so let's just go along to there and that bit these bits are lovely bows there we go, 9 inches for this design I'm actually having two front pockets and a rear pocket so the first pocket is 7.5 by 5 and 3 quarters so let's go 5 and 3 quarters as I say, all these sizes will be in the description box and they will be converted into centimetres as well. The reason I do this size envelope is because when you do a swap, they are actually this size. This is the standard size for those swaps so it's quite handy like so pocket number two is seven inches by three and a half inches so let's just bring that to there so it's three and a half and that is seven inches that's pocket number two and the rear pocket it's seven by five and a half now. I didn't have any more A4 ones, so I'm just going to pop that 
pieces away. Put those over there. Move the scrap board. Sorry, that's it, not going to be flying. Just tidy yourself up. Next thing you're going to need is your scoreboard. I love my scoreboard. So I'm hitting everything now. I'm doing this in my living room and I just haven't got quite enough space. And once I get my crafting finished, it'll be amazing. So, taking your body piece, we need to score this on the long side. So, along the ten and a half inch side, we need to score this at half. One, one and a half. Take your time, you don't want to be jumping the long scores. Now, bring this over, you want to score at half. You've turned your paper 90 degrees, now jump there. So let's just bring that in, half. One and one and a half. And bring it over. You want to score eight and a half. Eight. Let's try it again, Charlie. Oh. Sorry about that. That's Done that nice and steady. And you're going to put that to one side. And the next piece to be scored is the first pocket, which is seven and a half by five and three quarters. You're going to score the long side of this at a quarter. Half and three quarters. Then you're going to score up six and three quarters, seven and seven and a quarter. Spin it round and you're going to score at a quarter, half and three quarters. So you've got score lines going now. The smallest pocket, which is the front pocket, which is seven by three and a half, you want to score at oh, half inch and six and a half inches. Spin it round so you're on the short side and score it at half an inch. Side. Then your rear pocket, you're going to score that at half an inch, six and a half inches, and you're going to spin it round to the short side and score it at half an inch. Now my tool is dragging a little bit, and what I'm tend to do is I have a little candle that I use, which is nowhere to be seen right now, um, and I just rub the tip of my bowl in the candle, just so it gets a bit of oil on it, and it makes life easier for scoring. Now, let's just put this away, and then I'll be back. I nearly forgot, this needs to be, have a little bit of a trim, so I you need to make a split in your paper at four and a half inches 
mark. Now, it doesn't need to be a huge split, but it helps for opening up. I am going to take mine down to, it says 8 centimetres on my board because it doesn't work in inches down here, but I'm going to bring it down to the, well no, I'm going to go 8, I'm lying. I'm going to go to 7 centimetre mark. So I'm going to bring my blade all the way down to it lines up at the 7 centimetre point and that will be it. So I've now got a little opening bit. So I'm going to put that there and then I'll be back. Two seconds. Oh, there. So, that's better. With this, you now need to do a bit of trimming. For this, you're going to need your long scissors because you need to take out this entire bottom corner where the spoil lines are. Just so that when you fold it, it allows the envelope to squash out and open up. So you just need to give that a bit of a trim like that. Pop those bits to one side. Now you're going to fold and burnish your lines or score lines. When you do these, and especially the way I do this, so you fold the first fold is that it folds back and away from your card. So how I do it, I do each fold at the same time that corresponds to other fold in towards back then I'm going to bring this fold back so back out away from the paper and by doing it this way I know each fold is correct and I can see if I'm going to have any issues with my envelope expanding sometimes you just need to trim a little bit more bring that bit there like that and then you're going to bring it in so that it then folds to face the inside again, ready to attach to the backing piece of your envelope. So that's going to fold it there, bring it in and fold it in there. Now burnish these score lines because they are going to be quite important. A nice little bow. Don't overpress your papers. Nice firm, but not overpress because you don't want to break your paper. And sometimes that does affect. So we're going to put that just there for a second and move on to our next piece. So the next piece we need is this piece. It's our first pocket. That's the one with the three score lines at the sides and at the bottom. Again, we're going to trim out those corners at the bottom where we've scored so that. That envelope can actually fold together. So as you can see, I don't know if you've got very few there. You've got the score lines and we've trimmed away that corner so that they can fold together and move easily. Once again we're going to fold our score lines and I'm going to work round my envelope so they all face the same way. And as we go across, fold it round. Bring it across there, bring it back, and folding it back there. There we go. Bring it back. And folding it back in towards itself. Oh, it's all a bit off. There, let's straighten that up. That's the one. And fold it back. There we go. And folding that back. And folding that into place. And that's that piece done. Next, we're going to take our rear pocket and we're going to trim off that corner. Just where the score lines meet, it helps with the folds. I do this with all of my corners when I've got the folds like it because I just don't want too much bulk in the corners. So, what we're going to do, we're going to fold it back, keeping it nice and straight. So, 
Turn the bottom and again with the top bit. So there we go, and that bit's there. This is our front pocket. I'm going to trim it just as we've done before, and then we fold this. Now, if you're making your own envelope, you want to make sure that all your right side patterns were on this side, and that your inner patterns are on the back, so that when you bring it together and you put your envelope together, you've got all the patterns on the right side. There are several ways of doing your envelopes. As I said, this one, I've already put the split there. With this pocket, I also want to have some shape to it, as well as the back one. But this I do by hand, mainly because it's the shape that I want. However, it's up to you how you work. So if you take your ruler... Now, this pocket will be attached to this pocket. So, oh, no, it won't. This pocket will be attached to this pocket here. So, let me just show you. You have this much room. So, in, in this case, I have two inches depth. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the halfway point. Now I love this ruler because it's going to allow me to find the centre point. So it's three inches either side. I'm just going to take my pencil. I'm going to mark three inches there. It helps to it out, doesn't it? Three inches there and at the bottom. So I've got a top and bottom reference point. I'll draw a line so I can see where it is. You are, you are not going to see this when it comes to doing it. And as I said before, this is my test envelope, so it really isn't going to notice. Now, on this pocket, I want to move an inch either side of that line and I want to come down one and a half inches. So I'm just going to mark across that line at the one and a half inches point. I'm going to rub out the bit below. So now I'm just going to bring across my ruler and go from there to the one inch mark there and mark that point. And the same the other side. So now I've made myself a triangle. I'm using my scissors. I'm going to cut that triangle away because I don't actually want it to be there. Some people you might want to roll it, but in my case, I just don't want that bit of bulk on my card. So I'm just removing that section. Now, because I am not the way I am, I also like to round that corner to give it a bit more of a girly shape. But it is up to you. And then I'm just going to take my eraser and rub away any little remaining marks. So that is the shape that I wish to have my pocket. So that when I come to put that one on, that then sits and isn't interfering with that mark there. My rear pocket, the same, I want to find. Three inch mark or the halfway mark. I'm going to mark either side of my ruler to give me the line. And I'm going to draw my line just so I can see it. But on this one, I want to come down two inches. This one coming down two inches now. Line it up my ruler on that line. I'm going to slide up and I'm going to mark one inch out on the other side. And again, I'm just going to join up those marks 
to form a bee. Now, as I said, you could split that there and roll it, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is trim it away and remove that section completely. It all comes down to personal preference. You could even fold it backwards and give yourself that corner there, but I don't want the bulk. I tend to fill my envelopes quite well and find that I need to alleviate as much bulk as possible. Once again, I'm just going to, by hand, curve the corner. Oh, that's it. Dropping, dropping the ball there. There we go. And I'm going to spin that around that way because I can actually do it better. Go in that direction than I can the other. And I've rounded that corner there. So that is that. Now, depending on what you're doing, how you're going to do it. You can either use double sided, wet glue, a mixture of both. I personally am going to use a mixture of both. So let me just grab my tape and we'll begin. So I use tear and tape. You could use fast years, you could use double sided you know, tape rollers. However, I just find that these work a little bit better for me personally. If I use double sided and a little bit of glue. So I use two different sizes. I've got this size, which is oh, about three eighths, which is on here. Let's have a look. Eight mil, and this one here, which is quarter of an inch, which is let's run that up six mil. Yeah, six mil. So they're the sizes I like to use for when I'm doing it, and obviously my tombow, which I am going to say now will probably go absolutely everywhere. So I'm going to take out back piece now. And so you'll probably do this with your pattern paper. So make sure that your pattern paper is facing onto your desk. And then we're going to take this piece, which is your front piece. You're going to add your chosen glue or tape. So. Some people tear this stuff off, I'm used to say it, so I like that straight edges, so I'll just put that there, in there, then we're only putting it on that flat that's facing in, and I'll show you in just a second the piece that I need. Just that free flat just there one facing in yeah now I struggle to get these off so be prepared sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but I do find if you run your bone folder over them and give it a good rub it does tend to come away a little bit more careful but I'm just gonna grab my little unicorn piercing tool And take the tape off that way. Now, yeah, I'm going, to do, I'm going to do one side at a time. I'm also going to do it all at once, but it's not easy. So, the first one I'm going to do, not that one actually, it's the bottom one. Um, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to use both, I'm just going to run my glue. I don't want too much, I don't want, it bit, oh, don't want to get on the other bits, but I do want it to be there, it does help the fibres to bond together, so, I'm going to push that one out of the way for the minute, spin that around there, 
that in there. And we're going to take this piece and we're going to line it up right along the bottom so it's right on that free edge. And I'm just going to rub it down. Keep those, all those lines in check while you're doing it. So everything's in line. That's the one. Keep it all in line. Everything's square. And there we go. I'm going to move that back. Move these bits in. One second, I'm going to turn that around because I can't do that. And not have the, I have the camera over here, I can't stand up in the pose it, well I can't stand up full stop, but that's neither here nor there. So just see what I mean about me and tear and take and then it fits well. I'm just going to bring that in, a little bit of glue there, rub it around, try not to be it everywhere, which is my normal state of affairs. Bring that down, just there. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And put that there. Now, keeping things nice and square. one side on and then the other. Don't try and do both at the same time. It tends to get a little bit messy if you do that. And you tend to be off the square. So very mind you do move around so you can, with the wet glue you do have a little bit of play time with it so it will do quite nice. Now if you've got a good old washing make sure you've got not I've got glue on absolutely everything which is what I normally do. Bring all your sides together, and now you've got your main pocket. So it's like, it does like little M shapes if you look at it, or W's, one or the other. So you make your pocket, and this is your front. Now, the next one we're going to do is this one, which is the back. So I'm going to spin that over. Now, I'll put, I always put this on first because it's flat. Once you get all the other bits on, it can be a little bit more tricky to line it up. So, by doing it this way, I alleviate some of the stress of trying to fix up onto an envelope that's quite bulky. So, it's popping on our double sided tape to the flap. Spin it round. And once again, add in tape. Using your bag holder, give them a little squish. Steady now. Make sure you've got the back of your envelope. Line up your corners and add your envelope. Now, hopefully, you're not getting my head in the way of everything. I'm trying to be as quick as possible. Open this up. You can see like blue absolutely everywhere. Take that off to so come to finish it. I don't have anyone else, but I've had three baby wipes more now than I did when my children were little. I need more baby wipes for this than anything else. So, I think they're the craft of secret weapon. So, we remove the 
cover of our tape. Put the wet glue in there to help with the bonding of the fibres. Now another lady that's helped me out immensely with my crafting, her name's Laurie from Paper J Crafts. She does a lot of stuff. She works with Stamp Club. She's an amazing crafter. I love her work. And obviously there's Caroline Hewitt from Crafty Caroline Creates. All these ladies have really influenced my uh, crafting over the last years. I've only been crafting for doing paper crafts for a year. So this has been a nice journey for me so I'm just sharing what I've learned with you guys so I hope you uh, are kind because I am quite new I'm also very nervous about doing YouTube videos but I feel that it's something that is worthwhile so on these ones we're going to use our quarter inch tape um, which is a little bit more fiddly so it's only a quarter of an inch gap on this so I'm just going to pop that on. This is your front pocket, first pocket. And as I said, all the score lines, all the dimensions will be on, will be in the description for you to uh, take down at your own time. So you don't need to be rushing and pausing. And so that's one thing I found quite difficult is having to keep pausing videos when I want to watch them to find out what sizes they were and write things down. Which I think sometimes detracts from what's actually being done. So that's why I'm going to write everything in the bottom for you. And I'm not going to send you off flying for looking for a blog anywhere or I'm not selling you anything either. So it's just the love of crafts for me. And the fact that when I was looking for certain things, I couldn't find them. And when I did find stuff, I fell in love with the work certain ladies were doing, and it's got me to where I am today. So I'm hoping that I may inspire maybe just one person to go off and do something. And I'd love to see what you're making, so you know, you can drop me a line, share with me what you've been doing. I'm more than happy to share with other crafters and hopefully there are some big things coming along soon we've just got to get things organized which i can't wait to show you but i am in the process of getting it all done so this is now just clean up and I'm going to glue this one straight on all three sides at the same time because it's such a tiny little fold. I found that this was my best option. But I also tried to make it so you didn't use too many sheets of paper because I know that it is quite difficult when you're uh, making stuff to not go over budget. And paper can be quite expensive these days, I've found. So here's where you go. Here we don't have in the UK we don't have that many places that we can actually physically go to especially where I am I actually live in Kent which is quite close to London but I do find that there's not so many places for me to physically go and buy stuff we've got hobby craft but I do tend to buy most of my stuff online because that's where we find stuff I turn up because I like to go to the range quite like that place but it's a little bit of a trip for me now last but not least is this pocket so back to our 8 mil tape and let's just pop that on there This bit this is turning into a bit of a marathon, isn't it? And plus here, what I might do is actually fast forward some of these bits so you don't actually have to sit and watch me tape and glue. But 
I don't know. What do you want? It's a cheer. I'll leave it long and then you can tell me. There's obviously some bits I can get rid of, but I don't really know if you'd like a short video or a long video. Let me know. Drop me a line underneath. Tell me what you think. A bit of wet glue. On all the sides. This is one fold, which makes it a little bit easier. Now, as I said before, don't be too juicy on your glue because it will go everywhere. So, lining up this. A second. Now we've got all of our pockets on our envelope ready to go. So that's that bit. Now let me just clear some of this mess up so we can actually move. The next bit is going to come down to what you are wanting to do with your envelope. There are several rules or well, several ways you can deal with this. The first way, if you take a brush, you can roll your corner and give you a rolled edge. But in this instance, what I want to do is I just want to fold like that to give me a nice wide opening. Fold it back. Inch away. That's the one. That's it. Just folded it back. And crease that line there and there. So I've got this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that forward. I'm bring that forward for a second. And on the wrong side of these, so this I folded in that way. You could even fold it out like that if you're doing a man, one for a man, you can make it look like a little shirt with a tie on it. It all depends on what you want to do with your envelope. This one, however, for the way I want to make it is I want to fold this in because I'm also thinking about putting a, a pocket in the back of this envelope so I'm needing to reduce as much of the bulk on this as possible so that I can get part of it in to be honest this is when I do this this will be covered in Christmas paper when I do the top on, it'll be covered in Christmas paper. But this, as I say, this is my blank. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this and now I'm going to decorate it with you so you can get some ideas on how to decorate these as well. I'll do that. So I've got some spare scrap paper there that I can use. It's nice to use things up and have things stored nicely. I use these templates to do quite a bit. I have quite a few of these that I made with different designs to test out ideas. You know, as I say, I've got a shirt looking one. I, just, I like to experiment, but I don't want to use my good papers to see if it will work. So I use my, my card, whatever card's laying around. So it's not very expensive, to be honest. I get a lot of papers and cards from the pound shop. So, with that, there is your basic loaded envelope. And that is just the envelope there. If you want to see how you could decorate it, then come back and join me and we'll do some decorating in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.